What's going on guys? I've got here a 2018 Chevy Silverado and I'm using this truck to point out to you the location of the starter relay as well as the fuse for the starter. And I'm gonna give you some troubleshooting steps for what to do when your Chevy's not cranking. So to begin, the very first thing I always check, if the engine will not turn over when you are in park, try shifting the vehicle into neutral. These trucks have a neutral safety switch if the sensor does not detect that you are in park, it will not allow the engine to turn over. So that's why shifting to neutral is always my go-to uh, first step. Now, beyond that, we can check out the fuses and the relays. So let's head under the hood and take a look at those. So our fuse box is gonna be over here on the driver's side. And in order to remove the cover, you've got to pull these two tabs away from you, away from the cover and pull pry upwards on the fuse box. Once you have the front of the fuse box cover free, you can pivot it upward and pull it away towards you. Now the fuse that provides power to the starter is this 40 amp J case fuse right here. You can look down through the top of the fuse and see if it's intact or not. And should you need to remove it, you just squeeze it with some needle nose pliers and Wiggle it side to side while you pull it straight up and out. So that's the fuse there. And as you may have guessed, the relay for the starter is this relay right here. Now my favorite way to troubleshoot this relay is to have an assistant inside the car trying to crank the engine over. While they're doing that, I'll come here and I'll actually tap on this relay. Sometimes relays can get stuck and by tapping on the relay or wiggling it, you can get it to start working again. Further troubleshooting beyond that, it helps to swap the relay uh, just to eliminate it. So we can remove the starter relay, set it aside. And a relay that's probably not been used very much is the trailer relay. So we can swap that in and see if the truck is able to crank after that. I wouldn't recommend swapping these other two relays as one is for the engine control module and the other one is a run crank relay. So I wouldn't really interfere with those. Now with this starter relay removed, we can take a look at the wiring. You can see I've got these pins color coded and I'll describe to you what each of those pins goes to. So we've got our red pin right here on the lower left. That receives a constant battery power from our starter fuse. So if our starter fuse right here is good, then we will see constant power here. There's a constant ground at this pin this pin receives power from the computer only when it's detected that you are trying to crank the engine over. If you never see power here when you're trying to start the car, it could be that uh, your neutral safety switch is busted, that your anti-theft system has been activated or that your key is no longer working, or your ignition switch could be failed. And this pin actually carries power to the starter when this relay is engaged. Now what's cool about this is using a wire, we can actually send our own power to the engine this will result in the engine turning over. Now, if you do this, make sure that your engine is in park or neutral with your emergency brake on. And also, be sure that no one has their hands anywhere near the engine. You know, I don't want you guys getting injured when trying to troubleshoot the starter. Now, let me get this reinstalled, and I wanna point out to you one other important thing that can cause your truck to not start. So moving over here to the passenger side, this is where the battery is. And while we're here, you know, of course, we'll wanna go ahead and make sure that the battery connections are clean, tight, and free of corrosion. There's also a fuse that is hidden behind this cover here. And this hidden fuse provides power to the starter. So you can't visually inspect this fuse here. It's the uh, 175 amp fuse but you can use a voltmeter to check for continuity between this. And while you're here, you know, you'll wanna make sure that these nuts are tight as well. So yeah, I hope that this information has been helpful for you, or at the very least, provided a good starting point in troubleshooting the starter on your Chevy Silverado. Please do chime in down below if you have any questions. Also, if you have any advice. Thanks for watching.